In this video, we're going to look at how the, the workflow strategies that we're developing now would have worked if we had applied them when we did the last writing assignment with the SPURS data. Remember in that writing assignment, our strategy was to build a separate folder and put everything about SPURS in that particular folder. I want to go and, and get some material from that folder. There was the SPURS CSV file which we had downloaded. We uh, taught you how we had done that. I'm just going to copy that and work my way back here. Remember in the work workflow strategy that we're going to use the rest of the semester. We will put everything about R in R stuff. And so in here, uh, currently I have two um, scripts. I'm going to talk more about this R Spurs script in a minute. <coughs> and in R data, we have all of our data. So uh, I want to sp put this Spurs data in there. Okay. I've already put it there, that's why it's saying uh, that, that it's there. Okay, so there there it is. There's the SPURS data that, that uh, we put in there. It happens to be a CSV file. All right, let's go ahead and start R. And let's look at this script that uh, I've already started for us. Here's our script right there. Not too much in the script. Now in each one of the scripts that we're doing, I'm saying to always have this set the working directory. Now an important thing for you to know is that in, that in R, there is a way to tell it to always open with its working directory at R stuff. Uh, that, the way to do that varies depending on the operating system that you're using. So it's a little bit different when you do it in, in Windows and a little bit different in Macintosh and a little bit different in Linux. So I'm not going to teach each one of those methods. I'm just using this strategy right now. We're going to just by hand uh, set that. We'll put it in our script so that we can come and copy that from our script and uh, just come to R and paste it in and now that's that's set. That's what our working directory is. Notice that I can look at uh, list files and and see the files that are there. There's our directory, uh, our data that has all of the data in it and then these two key scripts, the email script that we talked about in another video, and, uh, and here is the uh, R script that we're looking at right here. Uh, one of the first things that we want to do is to be able to read that data. So there's the command for reading the data. Notice that now instead of in, I, I need to tell it to go to R data to find that, to, to find the, the data and then the, the file that it is is going to be the R Spurs data. I can just copy that and paste that in here and so now we've got this data called, we've got this object called Spurs which is the data uh, that, that came from there. Remember that, that building this plot command was kind of complicated and sometimes you have to play around with it a little bit to, to get it to work right. So it's nice in your script to be able to write that down and, and, uh, and have it available and it's easy to come to the script and find out what it was and, and so I can just copy that and paste it into uh, uh, to R. And sure enough there's the plot. I didn't make my viewing window big enough for you to see the whole thing. There's, but there, <laughs> there it is. Uh, you'll notice that I changed the color of the dots and put the main heading and the X labels and, and so on. And you can, can look at the command here and study what it is. Sometimes it's even nice in your script to write down what some of these things mean, like the X lab is the the Y lab is the label for the Y axis and the main is the main heading and, and PCH19 changes the shape of that dot instead of an open circle it makes it a solid circle and uh, color equals blue. Those, those are, are things that take 
take a little bit to learn what they are and what makes it work. So it's nice to document it in your script and then two years from now when you actually need to produce something like this for one of your classes, you can remember that you did it uh, somewhere. You can come back and look at the script and kind of see the kinds of commands that were used to do it. So it has lots of advantages. This, this workflow pattern will be especially effective for us in the, in the future. One more thing that I might mention here is that once a script is written, you can, can do source and put the, the name of the script in parentheses as long as the working directory is pointing to where the script is. And in our case, the script is called spurs.r. And that will run the entire script. It runs everything uh, all at once. Okay. Good luck, everybody.